Now this is an example. So the interi pain scale, I'm going to give you some of the subscales. Many of you know these. I just want to review them really quickly as a something that we need to probably put more into practice than just have in the uh, chart rather that's not being used. So this scale is validated against the visual analog scale. Uh, what they're looking at is the frequency with which the person complains or shows evidence of pain. It is a zero to four scale. The zero to four scale is an easy thing. You know, if we got used to that parlance, which we're not quite yet, we're used to zero to 10. The question for us is, can we get in our, the, can we get used to the zero to four? And I agree with somebody was saying that that, that loses some of the detail, um, but we're already doing it. Can we use it as part of that? Uh, the pressure ulcer risk scale um, includes all of these uh, items, walking, bed mobility, bowel incontinence. Um, the score is a zero to eight. Um, this is actually, um, I think this is a really important one that is in the inter-eye, which is the weight loss of 5% or in the last 30 days or 10% in the last 180 days. I actually really, really think that this indicator needs to be up front somewhere. It's a really important indicator for um, nutrition as well as uh, skin. Um, so I think that that's a, an important one. Um, and if they've had a prior pressure ulcer, again, a zero to eight. I guess the question I have to you all who are doing this work or um, work in residential care or even in whatever your work is, how, how can we get people to use the pressure ulcer risk scale just as well as we use other scales that we often use? So it's, it is, you know, it's already there. If it pops up, you know, I guess the question for us is, could this as a subscale pop up somewhere so that we had an idea so that we could look at it on a, on a regular basis? Cognitive performance scale. This was uh, correlated to the mini mental state exam. Um, and a higher score, a more cognitive impairment. This is particularly helpful for somebody who you're worried about with uh, delirium, you know, is to kind of check and, and do this, uh, do these indicators. Aggressive behavior um, is verbal abuse, physical abuse, socially disruptive. Uh, one to four is mild, one, uh, greater than five. This is actually helpful for you if you need mental health services involvement. So using this as a scale to think about, do I need to get mental health involved? Now, the other thing that we have the subscales, and I think personally, I, I would like to see the subscales used more, be more readily available. You know, somehow we're already gathering that data. How do we make that more usable for people? Uh, the other thing is I do know that some uh, IT systems at facilities tend to um, uh, have built in scales so then you're doing that one plus you're doing inter eye and that's one of the things i'd love to see change somehow the caps on the other hand uh, are basically uh, they are triggered to say this is a problem you need to look at this as a problem of course this should be the basis for your care planning uh, they are at different levels uh, one two or three or high medium and low some just have one the, basically, to include CAPS in the care plan, you have to resolve a problem, reduce a risk of decline, or utilize potential for improvement. Not all CAPS have to be included in the care plan, but if you don't include the CAP, you just need to make a, a, a note of why not. So let me give you an example. One of the uh, main examples here is the prevention. CAP is always triggered because in New Zealand, we have a different, um, baseline for when that initial assessment should happen um, and so that prevention is uh, always triggered in New Zealand you just make a note this is not relevant to New Zealand you move on okay but what's also important is if you look here activities of daily living the top ones here the activities of daily living cardiorespiratory urinary incontinence mood falls physical activity and then we've got a lot of, of the other uh, caps that are triggered, that could be triggered, activities, bowels, and so on. Um, pain is um, relatively low, except um, when we look at palliative care, and that's a whole other discussion at the moment. Um, but I do want to just focus on these top ones at this point. Cardiorespiratory, when we did a, I'll show you some data a little bit later, but when we did a study called ARCUS and ARCIP, what we found is that 
This cardiorespiratory, these issues, we had, we were able to influence uh, hospitalization more with those issues than we were with other issues. Um, so I think that there is a lot that can be done, particularly with cardiorespiratory and urinary incontinence. Okay, so activities of daily living. Um, this is ability to dress, perform personal hygiene, walk, toileting. A lot of what we want to do is prevent decline, not facilitate improvement. I mean, people in residential aged care are very, very, have advanced frailty. They often, their dementia or whatever, or organ failure will get worse. Um, and so what we're doing is just trying to make sure that they don't decline rather than uh, incru uh, have improvement. So there's a couple of ADL scales. There is uh, the hierarchy scale, zero to six. Um, and then there's also the long form, which is zero to 28. This includes more uh, things like personal hygiene, dressing, upper and lower body, locomotion, toilet use, and bed mobility.